Previously, Anna the Fairy Queen was apparently able to just solve the entire game's issue of where are the dragons in the first five minutes? Because there's only one left and she knows exactly where, I, I guess, just by palling around with me for the entire game so far. I, I guess she just wanted to take a decade, decades long vacation and was forced to finally return to work because her butler started to screw things up real hard. Oh, this game, I tell you. Anyway, the whole silver plaque thing, talking to Rubens here in the in the Toronto library, doesn't really feel as pertinent as it did before, considering that the Fairy Queen already told me all of this information. There's only one dragon left, and that dragon's pro protecting against the Tide of Darkness that will bring back the Demon King, called Bellstorm in the last part for some reason. I don't think that name ever comes up. I think it's just called Dark Demon or Demon King or whatever. Well, anyway... Rubens was the talk of the town last time, along with a dude named Roan, and now Roan is the talk of the town this time, because, hey, we didn't really do anything with him in the previous part. Know that these dudes are in some way related for, to Roan, which I don't remember. In the school church here. Church school. Learn about church. Learn about churches and schools. There is a little bit of new dialogue in this area, but... Well, let's say this. Droog Volcan... It, this is... This is bizarre. <laughs> oh, you didn't know this building had a second floor? How do you hide that sort of thing? How do the people living in the school or whatever they're doing there not realize that? <laughs> Creating the... Most lordly of brain puzzles possible here, figuring out how to get up to the second floor of the school. Which is quite the question, to say the least. Well, he does live in this town, I don't... Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let me tell you, first time I played the game, that took me a long time to figure out. But yes, I was saying, not a whole lot of employee, not a whole lot of employee, a PC, NPC dialogue, because let's say Droog Volcano is maybe not the most expensive chapter of them all. And you'll see what I mean when I get to the volcano itself. The shadow world was disappearing? I don't know. <laughs> Man, didn't even need to convince him or anything. I didn't even need to tell him that the Fairy Queen had chosen me to be the one to talk to Fire Drake. Fire Drake, the dragon. <laughs> what a name. I do like the big design in the back of the church school there. That looks really cool. I wonder if they had to change it due to localization. Maybe Nintendo wouldn't allow them to make it a church. Too religious. And they, they, this was definitely the era when they were scrubbing out uh, all references to crosses and whatever. And, well... <laughs> everything. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, Road to Toronto is not the same thing as the Road to Drew. Even Drew gets its own little pre prelude sort of chapter, like every other one. Is it as good as the, the Barren Lands? Unfortunately, yes. Drew is a world? Magic sword? Does this mean anything? I don't know. <laughs> Let me tell you, it really doesn't. But yeah, here we get the road to Drew. With these enemies that circle around you, they are pretty much the exact same as the boss of the Ice Castle, which is interesting in the way that they attack you and do the whole circling thing. But they're also equally as annoying, even though you don't need stop necessarily to attack them. Do a lot of damage, let's just say that. I guess they're supposed to be gargoyles or something? Aside from that, you still have the same old beast men shooting arrows at you, all that. This nice little shoreline there, which is which is neat. I I like the look of it, because, consider, especially considering that the road to Droog is almost entirely the same uniform beige rock cliff. But the the problem with this area, is, and not just the lack of aesthetics here, is that where am I going? <laughs> Where's the entrance to Droog? I assume that this rock cliff is Droog Volcano. I mean, that would only make sense. Also, with the whole like disappearance of the Shadow World and everything that Roan was saying, you would think that Droog might be 
in a separate reality or anything, but we know that it is a real volcano that's just kind of sitting a little over to, and not even all that far, because the whole barren lands being cold, Druid volcano being hot, creates a quote-unquote perfect climate for Toronto, so... Why'd you need to go through the whole rigmarole with the sapphire and putting it into the weirdo statue thing? That's a good question, Billy, and I do not have an answer to that. M maybe this is some sort of secret part of Drew Volcano? Even then, it... Whatever. But yes, again, where am I going? There's no indication. All the other prelude areas, even the Barren Lands, which is a pretty open area, had the big portal just be almost dead center to the whole thing. Here, I'm just... The, the assumption would have been go all the way south to the bottom of the cliff. They, they have the whole... Uh, obviously different art style for the, the little beach area down there. So you'd think that that's where I would be going, but there's nothing down there. Also, oh, that irritating, irritating uh, slanting of the cliff. <laughs> I hope you can read exactly where the hitboxes for that are, because I definitely can't. <laughs> yeah, and then you comb the side of the cliff here. Nothing. It's too steep to get up. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, Road the Droog is, uh... As, as little as the Barren Lands had going on in it, despite having all those unique assets, Road the Droog has the one new enemy, and... Nothing else going on here. I have no idea where I'm going at all. I, in fact, I had to cut out a lot of footage of me just walking around and obviously using a lot of my health items on these annoying, annoying gargoyles. This, just, yeah, perspective game designers. Do, you gotta put some sort of indication as to where the player is supposed to be going. I, I guess the idea would be that you want to go up the giant cliff, but then you get this sort of thing. So I guess over here would be the area? Appears to have gotten up the giant cliff now. No, I'm fairly certain I've been in this area before. It's hard to tell because everything looks the same. Uh, hmm. No signs or anything? It would only take a single sprite or something like that to tell me that this is the correct area to get into Droog Volcano. I'm just saying. <laughs> Maybe some vegetation or NPC. <laughs> uh, but this is the idea. You don't really... It definitely feels like Enix was not putting as much effort into Droog as everything else. The, the fact that this is only a... Oh, there's the entrance. That little tiny hole in the wall, right there. <laughs> doesn't feel like it, yeah, it doesn't feel like Enix put nearly as much. The fact that this is a fairly short episode should tell you that. Oh, but let me tell you, it didn't really take too short of time to record in the first place. Yeah, they just shoot out gigantic, <laughs> gigantic fireballs at you. Bizarre. Don't give up, tree. keep trying. Oh. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's not even a puzzle. It's just annoyance in its most purest form, let me tell you. Why? These are the silent stones. No, you cannot break them with axes. I have tried. So, how exactly do these things work? Well, like I said, there's a reason why it didn't take me too much. It took me roughly the same amount of time as... Some of the earlier dungeons, maybe not uh, Ice Castle or the next one, the final one, to figure out the, the to get through this entire area. And why is that? It's because Drew Volcano is filled with these huge, uh, almost completely black areas. I took out the the light fairy, the fairy that provides light. He's not just uh, on a diet or something. To light the way a little bit, I don't think it actually works, but. I tried it. So, these dark areas, they're just filled with rocks, you can't destroy them, you can't do anything. Well, what happens is that when you scroll them off the screen, they rearrange themselves into a different, to a different area, which will allow you to access different parts of the dungeon. So, in most literal terms possible, 
you are just supposed to wander around until the until the dungeon decides to until the dungeon decides to reorient itself to let you pass through it's ridiculous it is absolutely crazy now there are still things like enemies new enemy types and lava's new too even though it works just like the electrified floors back in the site of civilization it just hurts you as you walk over it but uh there's not <laughs> and they they tried they disappear as time passes there and yeah it's telling you this area is not the one to get to the jewel i don't know what the jewel is But yeah, I suppose it would be the... That's pretty cool. And bows are not very powerful, but... The fact that they're that this one is so powerful makes it worth it to equip up right now anyway. Especially because they did put enemies in this area. This area that you're just supposed to wander back and forth in. But yeah, uh, unique anim enemies, unique to this area, all this sort of stuff. But it's built around this just awful mechanic. It, it is literal trial and error. You're just supposed to wander around until you find the correct path. And the correct path is whenever the game wants to give you the correct path. <laughs> I guess I'll say this. Just making a bunch of... A bunch of these dark stone areas probably was not too time intensive, which is why I would think that they did that sort of stuff. Why I would think that the Druk Volcano, the road to Druk Volcano, was so simple if it irritating to get through. It feels like filler at its absolute finest. Much like the Ice Castle, I suppose. The Ice Castle was story filler in some way, even though. You had some extremely important revelations about your party members. Yeah. There's no way to get through this without taking damage. I mean, you can just take damage, I guess. And I don't remember, but I don't think there is any way to actually cross or to be have lava damage nullified. You just got to get through there. And just see the rocks on the big grid here. They said, okay, and then when it's no longer on screen, when they deload the sprites, <laughs> all you gotta do is then reset where they appear on the level. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's the most irritating thing. <laughs> and there's not too much more to Droog Volcano aside from that. In, in fact, uh, I'll spoil this right now, there's not a boss for this area. You just go talk to Fire Drake, pretty much. Oh yeah, that was totally worth it. I should have just walked across the, the lava there. But yeah, it does make me wonder if they were starting to run out of money or time. Maybe the zeitgeist for Zelda was seemingly starting to wane. But it's, it's weird that this is so bad, <laughs> I guess. For the most part, the the rest of the game might have been rough, but it was never this utterly ridiculous. Yeah, rock breaker. No, don't don't believe the don't believe the hype. It's not going to be breaking rocks. <laughs> I mean, it literally can break rocks because that's what stones do in this game. But it's not going to be breaking the uh, quote unquote silent stones. And so I just jumped all the way back to this area. Much, much more wandering back and forth until the path opened up to me there. Uh, much like with, much like the, the electrified floor back in the site of civilization, jumping over and over will make it so you take a little less damage at least, not too much more. Yeah, you just get these pools of lava that spawn wherever they want, throwing around throwing around fireballs wherever they want. Uh, it's it's uh, really fair and really awesome. <laughs> yep, I missed the key. Oh boy. Yeah, there's the volcano. <laughs> In all of its glory. Good stuff. 
And there is a, and, and you can see all the way over there, there is a big second area. So that's obviously the area that you want to eventually get to. But for right now, more wandering back and forth. <laughs> I suppose if there was more of a switch or something that you could press, you know, something that gave you a little agency over how the stones moved rather than literally letting it. Yay! <laughs> Two if by land dragon and three if by sea. That's not how that quote goes. But yeah, there's a little bit more agency that you had over the control of the dungeon. Maybe the ability to see a map somewhere, maybe the ability to flip a switch on a wall to have it change its configuration. That is the actual Zelda way of doing it. Uh, the, you know, you, you flip the switch somewhere and then, oh, everything all rumbles around and then you're able to know where you're going next. Here are the games silently, and stonesly, but silently changes the layout of the area on you and you're supposed to realize that that's what's happening and wander around to make it work and you don't really have too much control over it. All, all of the all the ways the ways that the stones are set are all done in a, a consistent pattern. I think this dragon is very angry at you. But yeah, all the stones have a consistent pattern, so they're not all random. Even though that could probably be a thing. Oh boy! Cool look at the the scorpion getting black and white. <laughs> yeah, I just bailed out of there. Besides, I, there was nothing else to do in that area. I could easily go back to the first floor with no problems at all. Now you can see a little tiny island in the middle of all of that. In the middle of all those shenanigans. And I think the top area is where I got the key, specifically. It's not very helpful, but yeah, like I said, it could have been very easy to randomize how the rocks go and just have a path there, but I, I think they only have five or six maps total that it can spawn at over, you know, every time you change it. So it's not too bad, but it's still pretty bad. And you have to make sure absolutely that you are scrolling it off screen because it doesn't change while you can still see it. I guess you can also just exit the area to be able to, to be able to get them to reset too, but I don't know. <laughs> it's weird that the, this is the entire mechanic, especially after I... I, I just got done doing uh, Chapter 8 of Celeste, a very similar sort of aesthetic with the volcano and everything too, and that had five or six different mechanics associated with it. There's a lot of, there's definitely a lot of different things that you can do with volcano level. It's surprising that this was the one that they went with. Oh, yes, if you thought the stones were irritating to work with, well, there is one other gimmick given to you in this area. Now, gotta watch out for those random sprays of fireballs, though. Thankfully, health items are pretty cheap and pretty easy to get, so it's not too bad. Yep, wasn't risking that at all. Cheese? Cheese isn't even the best healing item at this point. It should have been a mushroom. Or meat. Or give me a heart brooch. That would have been really great, too. I haven't gotten one of those in a little while. Uh, but yes, there is one other thing that you'll be finding in this area. Down here? Oh, yeah. Don't you love the platforming in this game? <laughs> well, the developers do, so they put in a lot of it in the second half of the level? It's not even half. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Yep, that gigantic, I don't know, black iron pig that exploded apparently did almost all of my health and damage. <laughs> I love it because it has the, it not only has the ability that once you hit it, it explodes, but also a unique enemy to this area, no less. But also, it uh, slows the game down a lot when it's about to explode. I have no idea why that does that. Maybe, that might actually be a stylistic choice, unlike the other slowdown in the game, but that's still kind of crazy. <laughs> Stay away from those is what I'm saying. But yep, it's all about platforming in this section in the latter half of the dungeon. I mean, don't think you're away from the the Silent Stones just yet. But, uh... To be honest, I would rather have the stones. The stones, when you, say, fail to get through an area, don't send you all the way back to the start of the area. Unlike falling here, which does. <laughs> Uh, along with the slowdown and just general 
wonky hit detection on this. Oh, and hey, look, it's one of those uh, exploding pigs over there. Yeah. Come on, man. We don't have to do this. Worth it. <laughs> oh, wait, just respawn. Ah, uh, well, can't always get what you want. And the amount of moving platforms here is definitely not helping with the with the bad slowdown either. Oh well, at least my uh, my plan to jump across that uh, to jump across that platform actually worked this time. Don't screw it up, cause you gotta do the entire thing again every time you do. You know what they could have done? They could have just put down lava there instead of a a, a bottomless pit. That would have been equally as dead dragon hmm that would have been annoying too but at least you wouldn't die the second that well at least you wouldn't have to go back to the start each time that happened get full up on healing supplies and everything healed and, and all that but now go oh, dead dragon hey wait no oh. <laughs> No, you t when I pulled up the magic mapping device, uh, x-ray, x-ray goggles, you saw that there was another area there. Oh, yeah, I remember this from Side of Civilization. The old conveyor belt mechanic. Yep, so the kind of questionable platforming is now made even more questionable with the ability to just automatically get pushed into it. Oh, and are there enemies in this area? Oh, you know there's enemies in this area, too. Yep, and there's a prime example of trying to jump, trying to get that jump working while also being pushed around everywhere. Ooh boy. There we go. That wasn't too bad though. I said, oh wait, there's more. <laughs> yep. Oh, didn't even edit out that one. You know, this is why Zelda doesn't have platforming stuff. You don't have to worry about this sort of finicky nonsense in what's allegedly supposed to be an action game otherwise. Wait, I thought there was one of those black iron pigs somewhere. Oh, well. Hooray, Sea Dragon Key. That feels equally as final. <laughs> I don't know, maybe? Maybe a little bit? Yeah, you're really running low on warp gates. Gotta go pick up a few more of those uh, next time I'm getting to town. But I did in the last thing. I guess not. Whatever. With the two keys, it doesn't even matter. I can easily get right back to the to the area that I was at previously. And Sea Dragon Key. Take me home. No, no, no. I already... <laughs> I already forgotten what keys that I've been picking up here. A lot of different dragons around. A lot of different dragon keys. Oh, come on, this area again. I mean, it's not that bad, but creating the pools of lava, and I think those pools of lava do in fact stay until you leave the area, uh, re-pop it, is uh, more annoying than anything else. Also, the fact that you don't really have too much ability to predict where those fireballs are going to be going. Yeah, essentially, you just want to make a mad dash through here. Uh, I shouldn't even be wasting time fighting those weird fireball spinning faces. To be honest. At least it's pretty obvious which ones they are. Oh, there we are. And, yeah. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, and of course, what do you think that area is going to be like? Oh, it's going to be the worst, let me tell you. Yeah, wait, I actually did think that there were some more of the Silent Stone areas. I guess not. Oh, it's weird how they kind of pitched that in the, the second half of the dungeon. I guess even they realized how... Oh, I died. <laughs> oh, thanks, Light. That was, that was real helpful of you. Why do I even still have you out at this point? Not that the healing fairy... I mean, the healing fairy I just shouldn't use at all because her beeping is very irritating, but at least she does something. Ah. Uh, Enix, you're not making game... Enix, you, you should have known at this point that the constant beeping is too annoying 
Especially for something that you want to have out all the time. I mean, that's been a problem with Zelda since the earliest days. Okay. Yeah, here is where all the pigs were. That's right. Oh, and one more save point for good measure. Sure, why not? At least now I have a uh, waypoint for fast travel or whatever. <laughs> Especially because if you forgot the dead dragon key, well, you're kind of on luck and you gotta go back. That's me. A warrior of dragons. And then a big empty area that has nothing in it. Oh well. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why I need to have that extra boost of confidence here. It's not like I'm gonna be fighting a dragon. At least this is nice and, uh... Oh, come on! You're still gonna try to hurt me? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty much what the last black said. But yeah, I wouldn't possibly be fighting a dragon. What? Uh, no, I'm not. No, that'd be too cool for the sequence. <laughs> hey, it's Fire Drake. What up, dog? Uh, I don't think that was... I don't think the Fairy Queen picked me so much as, uh... Aww. <laughs> A surprisingly, uh, bittersweet sort of, of end to the storyline of where all the dragons gone. It's a... it's a bold choice. I appreciate it. Ow. <laughs> but this is actually cool. Yeah, the power of the dragon is not only figurative, you actually get stats associated with it. It's kind of awesome. For a pretty disappointing dungeon, this had a kind of cool ending. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, the, the, the end of Druid Volcano, pretty neat. The lead up to it, not as nice. <laughs> Some definitely interesting choices for an, uh, an SNES era game. Like, sucks that uh, didn't have a dragon companion here. But, ah, uh, well. Last one of his kind. Weird. Hmm, the music seems to have changed. Do you think that might be because the dragon died and it's all maybe not great outside right now? Uh, hmm. 